How's it going guys? I'm Theo. My hair at this point has gotten so long that my head is starting to feel top heavy Joe. And today's discussion is about an operating system that statistically 76% of us know and love. It's Windows. We all probably know that there are several different operating systems. There's Windows, there's Linux, there's Mac, but Windows has a reputation of having a lot of viruses, whereas the others don't. And is this because Windows is inherently less secure and does it actually have more viruses or is it all just a bunch of myths, that's what we're gonna talk about today. So as a starting point, we should probably look at some virus and malware data. So we can look at the AV test report they release every year. So this one was from 2018 to the beginning of 2019 is the most recent one. And they actually released info about how many new viruses and malware they've come across every year. And for Windows, their data shows about four to seven million new pieces of malware every single month. That's insane. And if you look at the comparison to other operating systems like Mac OS, which has just seven to 10,000 per month, in this time frame, and for IoT, Internet of Things, and Linux devices, it was around 10,000, but rising to around 40,000 per month. Now, just looking at this info in a vacuum, you might be assuming, oh my God, Windows is insanely insecure. Four to seven million new viruses compared to a few thousand in the others. What is going on? However, the reality is a bit surprising and it does not necessarily mean that Windows is inherently less secure than the others. Because really, Windows is not exactly a slouch when it comes to security. It has built-in antivirus, which is not the worst. It has recent new exploit protection. It used to be a separate software, but they built exploit protection directly into the operating system. And they've also been developing new sandbox architecture for programs to keep things more isolated. They created the UAC to prevent user escalations of privileges when it's not necessary, to, which would allow viruses. So they've actually done a lot to improve security over the years. And one big piece of the puzzle for why there's so many more viruses is the actual market share of these different operating systems. So if we look at the most recent data, it shows that Windows is about 76% of user operating systems, all versions of Windows, whereas OS X or Mac OS is only around 19%, and then Linux is down at about 1.6%. And one of the reasons, if not the biggest reason why Windows has so many more viruses is because it is by far the biggest target. If you're going to create a virus, let me ask you this, are you gonna be developing a virus that has just 1.6% of the users and Linux users are typically gonna be a lot more tech savvy? Or would you rather go for the operating system that 75% of people use? And this has a huge range of users from people who are very tech savvy to people who have no idea how to even type properly. You're gonna get a huge amount of more people who are vulnerable if you go for Windows. Windows. And especially considering a lot of Windows users are still using old versions of Windows. I mean, about 20% of people still use Windows 7, which is no longer getting security updates. And even 1% still use XP. Now, obviously 1% is not a lot, but 1% of billions of devices is still a crap ton of devices. And considering how old Windows XP is, if you target those devices, yeah, you might get fewer users, but you're also almost guaranteed to be able to exploit whatever you want on XP because it hasn't gotten updates in years. Another thing to remember is the amount of viruses does not exactly tell you how many vulnerabilities and exploits there are. Just because there's a million viruses out there doesn't mean there's a million different exploits. They could all be exploiting the same thing. Another really important point is just because there is a virus out there that runs on Windows doesn't necessarily mean that it exploits Windows operating system itself. It might take advantage of user behavior, which we'll talk about later. But let's talk about some other operating systems for a minute, such as Mac OS. Is Mac OS inherently more secure than Windows considering it does have so many fewer viruses. Surely if it has 20% of the market share, shouldn't it have about 20% of the viruses? Well, maybe. In my opinion, Apple has over the years for all of their devices really had a tendency to more lock down the experience and rather favors more simplified experience rather than just letting the user do whatever they want, which is kind of like what Windows really does. And there are some additional restrictions for how Mac allows programs to run. For example, apparently in the most recent version of Mac OS, it will scan an application every single time it runs and compares it to a malware list. There's also another feature slash technology called Gatekeeper, which prevents applications from running unless it has a signed certificate that is from a 
developer that's been approved by Apple. And in this case, if it doesn't have a signed certificate, you could still run it, but you really have to dig into the settings. There's no just okay run anyway button like you kind of have on Windows. You really have to kind of know what you're doing to dig into the settings to run something that hasn't been signed, which will significantly reduce the chances of just finding some random virus on the internet and running it yourself. And also for apps that are at least on the Mac App Store, Apple has a requirement that these apps will run sandboxed, which will limit its ability to modify other devices or folders on the rest of the computer. Now, all of that does not mean that Mac is somehow impenetrable. Actually, there are probably some disadvantages, I would say. First of all, the reputation of Macs not being able to get viruses or the fact that you might think, oh, Macs have so few viruses, I don't have to worry, might in itself cause people to just not behave with better security practices. So if you go and download a file and run it, you're like, ah, it's so unlikely that it'll be a virus. So if you're actually going to write a virus, then you could kind of exploit people's complacency and maybe get a better hit rate. And actually recently you can see malware on Mac OS has pretty much skyrocketed recently. Most of it is in the form of what's called malvertising. So it's a malware Trojan or something that comes in and then injects advertising into the computer experience, whether it's on the browser or whatever. So it's basically not a virus that's going to steal your info necessarily, but it will monetize you by inserting ads where they're not supposed to be. And there have been several notable examples of Mac viruses or malware, one of which is the Schleyer virus, which I talked about in a previous video, which at one point had infected an estimated 10% of all Mac devices. So that is one deception of just looking at the pure number of viruses of Mac OS, though there's only 7,000 or whatever, but those 7,000 might infect a disproportionate percentage of all devices. Because think about it, just one of those viruses was able to infect 10% of all Macs. I mean, that's pretty bad in itself. So you can't just look at the pure number of viruses and say, oh, well, there's fewer viruses, therefore it's more secure because you could have one just really good virus and it could do more damage than a ton of viruses that all are not able to exploit as many computers. Another example of one virus able to bypass that gatekeeper signature security feature was called Crescent Core, which basically got hold of a legitimate developer key and used it to sign the virus. And then that was able to run and bypass because it was legitimately signed. So it bypassed it that way. All right, now let's move on to Linux, which also has a very low relative number of malware being developed for it. Obviously one of the advantages is how few users there are of Linux. Now I'm not talking about servers because on the enterprise side and server side, by far Linux is the most popular, but in terms of people accessing the internet, going out, downloading things, browsing the web where a lot of viruses are spread, Linux is a very, very tiny percentage, just 1.6%. And Linux also tends to have a much more power user tech savvy user base than other operating systems because relatively Linux is not exactly as set it and forget it as you can get with Mac OS or Windows. With Linux, you're gonna have a lot of people who are using it because they can customize everything they want about it. They can choose their own Linux distribution and there are so many different distributions about it that you kind of have to target a specific one and worry about all the other ones because 1.6% of just Linux might be broken down into dozens of distributions, which are a little bit different. For example, there's even one called Cubes OS, which was literally recommended by Edward Snowden for being secure. Another big advantage Linux has is its open source, which means you have security researchers all over the world who are able to inspect the code at all times and explore different potential vulnerabilities. So it's kind of like the more eyes you have on it, yeah, there's gonna be hackers looking at it too, but the more good guys you have looking at it, then it's probably gonna be more secure and it has been uh, historically. Now, considering everything we've talked about so far, another really important point is just because there's an attack that occurs on an operating system doesn't necessarily mean that it's attacking the operating system itself. It might be attacking software running on that operating system, like a web browser, or it could be taking advantage of user behavior. And a lot of times if you're taking advantage of user behavior and that's your main goal, then it doesn't really matter how secure the operating system is if you can get the user to do exactly what you want. Phishing is one really good example. It doesn't matter what operating system you're on. If you can set up a fake website and get people to type in their credentials, well, you just attack them. And it doesn't matter if they were on 
Windows or Linux or Mac OS because it didn't attack the operating system itself at all. And there was actually one survey done at the DEF CON conference, like a security conference. They interviewed, I believe, about 70 different hackers. And of those, about 84% of them said that they used some sort of social engineering when doing their attacks. So really, I would say user education and user behavior is even more important than really the operating system itself, as long as you're keeping it all up to date. And also another point is a malware might not even be targeting the operating system, but rather the software running on it. For example, in 2018, AV test found that while 51% of malware was targeted directly at Windows, about 22% was targeted at browsers. So it doesn't even matter what operating system you're necessarily running on. If it's just targeting in the browser, then you could be in trouble no matter what you're using. And that was a little bit different in Q1 of 2019, which found 75% of malware targeted Windows and 10% in browsers. I don't really know what the reason for the difference is there, but just so you know. Now, further going on the point that really market share kind of drives the amount of viruses is looking at the amount of Linux and IoT viruses. So a lot of IoT or Internet of Things devices, these are like little smart home devices. A lot of the cheap ones made by like random independent technology manufacturers have very bad security on their IoT devices, if at all. And this kind of explains the data showing there have been more viruses developed for IoT and Linux. Because you might see, well, Linux doesn't really have that many more users, but there are a ton of more IoT devices. And because they have so bad security that again, it makes them an easy target. So it might make a hacker more willing to go towards those if they know, all right, there's fewer of them, but they're becoming more and they're so easy to attack. Maybe there aren't so many opportunities to exploit it, like you can take someone's banking credentials, they're not putting their banking credentials on an IoT device, but you know, you could do other stuff with it. So really going back to the main title and topic of this video, is Windows the least secure operating system? And I would say it might not be the most secure, certainly. I would probably say that Linux is the most secure operating system, but does that mean that Windows is inherently insecure or you're more likely to get a virus on it? And my response to that would be, yes, you're probably more likely to get a virus on Windows, but if you're able to educate yourself to the point where you are not susceptible to a lot of the behavioral exploits of these viruses, getting you to download something, tricking you into thinking you need to download this software that's actually a virus, then it doesn't matter what operating system you use because you'll be personally less vulnerable and that's way more important than what the operating system you're using is. And like I said before in this video and many times before, you can mitigate a vast majority of the risk by just keeping up to date with your operating system. A lot of these exploits are developed for older versions of Windows, taking advantage of people who are not updating, and you are going to be far ahead of the curve, and hackers are not gonna even target you at all if you have the most recent version. So that's really all I have to say. If you guys completely disagree, you can let me know down in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is one I made recently talked about nine advanced Windows features, including a so-called God mode you might've heard it before. So definitely check that out right there. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.